Hi everyone, I am going live today. I know it's not 2.30 on Sunday, but I'm doing it a little early the day before because my husband has a service project he's doing and so I am jumping on here right now so that I can keep it in um, IG Live and so you can watch it tomorrow and I'll also have it on my YouTube channel. So I'm not waiting for anyone to come and follow um, today. I'm just gonna get started. If you're here, welcome. <laughs> if you're not here, Totally fine because I wasn't expecting anybody, but I wanted to be able to post it. So, um, okay, here we go. So we're gonna start with our prayers today. It's almost dinner time in my house. So my kids are watching a movie and I'm gonna try and get on here as quickly as possible so that um, you guys have what you need for tomorrow. So let's start with We Are Drops and then we'll do So So Powerful and we'll do Oh God Guide Me and we'll do um, Let the Flame of the Love of God, okay? Okay, so we'll start with the oh guy guy. All right, we'll start with we are drops. We are drops. We are drops of one ocean. We are waves. We are waves of one sea. Come and join us. Come and join us in our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. We are flowers. We are flowers of one garden. We are leaves. We are leaves of one tree. Come and join us, come and join us in our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. All the world, all the world is one country. Man is one, can't you see? Come and join us, come and join us in our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. So just to let people know, if you're jumping on here, I'm pre-recording this lesson for tomorrow, um, but you're welcome to follow along right now. We just sang We Are Drops, and now we're going to sing um, Oh God Guide Me. So Oh God Guide Me goes like this. We start with our fingers up in the air. Okay, we're going to sing it two times. We're going to go, Oh God, guide me, protect me, make of me a shining lamp and a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. Again, Oh God, guide me. Protect me, make of me a shining lamp and a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. Okay, now we're gonna sing so, so powerful. So I need to see those muscles. Let me see your muscles. Okay, you ready? Here we go. So, so powerful, so, so powerful is the light of unity. So, so powerful, so, so powerful is a light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth that it can illuminate the whole the whole earth the whole earth we're gonna do it again a little faster okay so so powerful so so powerful is a light of unity so so powerful so so powerful is a light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth that it can illuminate the whole the whole earth the whole earth okay and the last one we're going to do is let the flame of the love of god so it's a call and response the first half and then the second half is we'll sing it together okay so we'll go uh, okay let the flame, let the flame of the love of God, of the love of God, burn brightly within, burn brightly within your radiant hearts, your radiant hearts. Let the flame, let the flame of the love of God, the love of God, burn brightly within, burn brightly within your radiant hearts, your radiant hearts. And then this part we sing together. Feed it with the oil of divine guidance and protect it in the shelter of your constancy. Feed it with the oil of divine guidance and protect it in the shelter of your constancy. Let the flame, let the flame of the love of God, of the love of God, burn brightly within, burn brightly within your radiant hearts. Your let the flame, let the flame, the love of God, the love of God, burn brightly within your radiant hearts. Thanks for singing with me, you guys. Okay, so today we are talking about patience. And patience is something I think a lot of children um, talk about a lot with their families. 
Um, and it's really, really hard to be patient. It's really hard sometimes to be patient. Um, you know, they, have you ever, have your parents ever done this test with you, the marshmallow test where they put a marshmallow in front of you and then they see if you can, if you don't eat the marshmallow right away, you get another marshmallow and they leave the room and see if you eat the marshmallow. And if you don't eat the marshmallow, then it means that you're able to um, delay this gratification. But what's interesting that I learned recently is you would think it's getting harder and harder for kids to not eat the marshmallow, but actually over time, kids have gotten better at being patient. I was so surprised. And some of that has to do with being in school. Some of that has to do with the games that you guys get to play. So you guys are probably pretty good at patience, but we're gonna talk a little bit about patience because even grown-ups have to be patient and sometimes it can be really, really hard. So the quote we have today is, he verily shall increase the reward of them that endure with patience. Let's break that down. I know it's flipped. It always is. But we're going to break that down real quick. Okay. He, who do you think he is? In this, we're talking about God. So God verily shall increase, which means make more, the reward of them that endure with patience. And what does endure mean? Endure means to kind of get through something. So if you're having a really, really hard time and somebody helps you and they help you get through um, to endure a hardship, or maybe endure means maybe you're in a lot of pain, it really, really hurts, but you don't complain. So you're enduring the pain without complaining about it. So endure means kind of to get through something um, with patience. And patience, as we know, is... Um, being patient or delayed gratification, right? Or um, not complaining when something is hard or difficult or um, seems challenging to us. Or maybe it just means, you know, when I think of patience in terms of with plants, you plant something in the ground and it doesn't happen right away. You have to wait for it to grow, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read a couple of stories. I have two books today. Sometimes I read three, but I have two. And then I have a story from Ruhi book three, grade one, that um, talks about a boy named Li Yin. And then uh, we're gonna do an art project, okay? So the books I'm reading today are No Fix Nilsen and The Very Impatient Caterpillar. I think being impatient is the opposite of patience, right? Impatient. Okay, so let's read No Fitz Nilsson first. I'm gonna come over here so that you guys can see these pictures. I know everything's flipped over, and I apologize about that, but I don't know how to flip it on Instagram. This was illust this was uh, signed by the author and illustrator. Is it the same person? Yes. See, it says No Fitz. No Fitz Nilsson by Zacharia O'Hara. Nilsson and Amelia do everything together. Who do you think is Nilsson and who do you think is Amelia? This big guy is Nilsson and this little one is Amelia. Except for baths because Nilsson is afraid of water. It's all fun and games, but sometimes all it takes is a tiny bump. Uh-oh. She's bumping Nilsson's tower with the side of her scooter by accident. What is Nilsson going to do? <gasps> and Nilsson throws the biggest, most house-shakingest fit ever. So big, they both get a timeout. Here's Nilsson all the way over here. He feels bad. And here's Amelia crying over here in time out. Sometimes Amelia tries to help Nelson when he starts to get upset. No fits, Nelson, she'll say. We're having banana pancakes for breakfast. Banana pancakes make Nelson forget all about his fits. After breakfast, it's time to help Amelia's mom, but Nilsson wants to stay home. I don't want to go. No fits, Nilsson, Amelia says. This is an adventure, not errands. Nilsson is perfectly behaved at the grocery store. 
Look at how patient he's being. They're getting everything they need. But he is ready to burst while they're waiting in line at the post office. <laughs> no fits, Nelson, whispers Amelia as she hands him her favorite froggy coin purse. It's hard to wait in line, isn't it? He's patient. He's patient waiting for the train and even holds the door. Thanks, Nelson. Being so patient. So courteous. But on the train, someone else has a banana. Uh-oh. Nielsen really wants a banana, too. <gasps> no fits, Nielsen, hushes Amelia's mom. If you both sit quietly, we'll get banana ice cream on the way home. Amelia covers Nielsen's mouth and stares him down with a gorilla eye look, repeating the words, banana ice cream, over and over again. Banana ice cream, banana ice cream, banana ice cream. Does it work? Does it calm him? Is he able to be patient? At last, their stop. At the ice cream truck, Nielsen places his order. Here you go. Last scoop of banana, folks, sings Albert, the ice cream man. Uh-oh. Last scoop. Amelia can't believe it. Ugh, she stomps, she growls, she roars. I wanted a banana ice cream. That's when Nelson hands her his ice cream. No fits, Amelia, he says. I'll get chocolate instead. Thank you, Amelia peeps. They both share cones, and guess what? They have a new favorite flavor, Choco Banana Twist. That night, Amelia gives Nelson an extra hug. I love you, no fits, Nelson, she whispers. Sweet banana dreams. Is Nilsen actually a huge big gorilla or is he a little tiny stuffed animal that she carries around with her everywhere? Yeah, I think he's a little stuffed animal and it was really hard for him to be patient at the grocery store, at the post office, waiting for the train, on the train. And then when Amelia didn't get what she wanted, it was hard for her too, huh? But in the end, they did a good job being nice and patient. Now this one, the very impatient caterpillar. Do you think this caterpillar is patient? Or not patient. He's not patient. I'll, I'll give you that right there. He says, is it time yet? Time for what? What do caterpillars do? Caterpillars eat, eat, eat. And then they spin themselves into chrysalis or um, cocoons. And then they become butterflies. But it doesn't happen right away. It takes a bit of time. So let's see how this caterpillar does while he's waiting to become a butterfly. Okay? Hey, what are you guys doing? We're going to metamorphosize. See all the caterpillars going up the tree? And here's this impatient caterpillar. Meta what now? Transform into butterflies. Right, right, I knew that. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me I can become a butterfly? Yes. With wings? Yes. For real? Yes. Wait for me! Now what? Build your chrysalis. Chrysalis, right, right. <laughs> I knew that. What? How do you do that? Is it a spin or more of a twirl? Am I a butterfly yet? Ugh. Now what? Just be patient and let nature take its course. Patient, right, right, right. I got this. Okay. Do you think you can be patient? Let's see. Am I a butterfly yet? No. Am I a butterfly yet? No. How about now? No. Now? No. Be patient. Hmm. I have a question. Not yet. You don't even know what I was going to ask. Fine. Ask. How's your day going? Also, am I a butterfly yet? No. Just be patient. Shh. We're trying to metamorphosize. Okay, okay, okay. Look at all those butterflies that are going to come out of those. You can tell his is his because it's purple. See? Everyone else is orange. Obviously, I know this, but do you know how long this takes? Two weeks. Right, right, two weeks. Two weeks? Oh my gosh! 
Look at his face in here. You see his eyes, his mouth, his arms. He's upside down. He's wiggling around. He can't wait two weeks in this, in this chrysalis. Oh, what am I going to do in here for two weeks? Can I get a comic book or something? What if I need the bathroom? Anyone want to play a game? What if I want a snack? Hello, two pieces, please. My address, a chrysalis. Click. How long have I been in here? Hello, hello. It's still day one? This is taking forever. That's it. I feel metamorphosized enough. So you're going to try and come out. What's going to happen? Look out, world. Feast your eyes on this beauty. This beautiful butterfly. How do I look transformed? Time to spread my wings and fly. He doesn't look like a butterfly to me. He looks like an ooey gooey, yucky caterpillar. Wait! Flap, 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 flap. Where are my wings? Spot. Time for a new approach. He was too impatient. He didn't build his wings yet. Let's see. Okay, you can do this. You can be patient. Who am I kidding? I can't be patient. Get a grip. You can be patient. I can't. I can't. You are the little caterpillar that could. Am I the little caterpillar that could? You can. I can't. He doesn't want to wait two whole weeks in there. You can. I can't. You can. I can't. You can. Can't. 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 Look at this squirrel over here. This squirrel's like, what the heck is going on in that chrysalis? He's fighting with himself. He's trying to be as patient as he can. It's so hard. And all these other chrysalises, look. They've all turned a dark green. Do you think they're ready to come out? Probably pretty soon. I can be patient. Patience is all in the mind. Be one with the chrysalis. Deep breath in and out. Look, day six. I'm doing it. Just be patient, just be patient. And look at that. He was practicing and practicing and he was able to be patient. It took so much practice, but he got so much better at it. And then here he comes two weeks later. I did it, I'm a butterfly. Oh my gosh, it took so much patience and he did it. Yeah, now I do feel transformed. Starting now, I'm going to be way more patient. That's great. Hey, where are you all going? We're migrating. Migrating, right, 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 right. Wait for me. Are we there yet? No. Ugh. <laughs> migrating all the way from, I don't know, where do they migrate from? I know they migrate down to Mexico from where I live, which is New Jersey, and then back up and down. So I guess, but I'm not sure where they hatch. Do you know? If you know, send me a message. I know they hatch in one place and then they fly up and then they fly down. And so he was, he was, he was having such a hard time waiting in that chrysalis for all, do you know how long two weeks is? Two weeks is 14 whole days. That's a long time to be waiting in a chrysalis. But the more he did it, the better he got at being patient. And that's why like all of our virtues, the more we practice them, the easier they get and the better we become at, um, showing them and, and using them. So if you remember this page where he's like, I can do it, I'm waiting, I'm patient, breathe in, breathe out. Patience, 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 patience. He did it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is only 12 of the 14 days. Look at him go, right? Okay, now the very last story I'm gonna tell you isn't a storybook. It's out of the Ruhi book, but I really like this story because I have a story to tell about a peach tree in my yard afterwards. So I'm gonna read the story real quick. Then I'm gonna show you a, an arts and craft project we can do together. And today, because we were reading about an impatient caterpillar, I thought we could make some butterflies. And there are a bunch of different ways you can make these butterflies, but I'll explain that in a second, okay? So first, let's read this story. So you're gonna to have to imagine what's happening in the story in your mind, because I don't have a picture before it, okay? Leon was very fond of peaches. Do you like peaches? I never used to like peaches, and then there was a peach tree in my yard, and I saw it suddenly, like, now I love peaches. There were, they were one of his most favorite foods. Every day he would bring a peach with him to school and eat it during his lunch break. He enjoyed every bite, but he always threw away the pit with the seed inside. One day, Li Yin's class was learning about seeds. This gave Li Yin an idea. 
he would plant a seed from his peach and help it grow into a tree. At lunchtime, he saved the pit from his peach and wrapped it in a piece of paper. When school ended, he raced home and asked his father to help him find a place to start growing his tree. His father reminded him that he would have to wait for the pit to dry before he could get the seed out. Still, Li Yin wanted to plant the pit right away. Li, Li Yin said his father, if you don't have the patience to dry the pit, how will you have the patience to wait for the seed to sprout? So Li Yin set the pit out to dry. How long do you think it takes to dry a pit? I bet if you leave it out, maybe a couple days, yeah? A few days later, oh, Li Yin was finally able to crack the pit and pull out the seed. His mother showed him a corner of the yard where the tree could grow big and tall. Li Yin dug a small hole and dropped in the seed, then covered it with a mound of moist earth. He grinned with excitement. His tree was finally on its way. Now, how long do you think it takes for a seed to sprout? Depends on the seed, but a peach tree probably takes a bit of time. Every day, Li Yin would visit the mound, hoping to see some sign that the seed had sprouted, but no sprout appeared for weeks. And Li Yin grew disheartened. That means he grew, he grew worried and didn't think it was gonna happen. Seeing Li Yin's concern, his mother asked him what was wrong. My seed is not growing, Li Yin said. I wonder if I will ever have a tree. Well, said his mother, this seed has a lot of growing to do. In that way, it is very much like you. When you were born, you were just a tiny little thing and all you did was eat and sleep and poop. <laughs> and now look at you. You are a young boy walking, talking, and thinking for yourself. This tree may take many years to grow, but if you care for it well, then someday you will be able to sit in its shade and enjoy its fruit. Thinking of this, Li Yang grew hopeful again. He knew from his class that a seed had to go through many changes be before it could ever become a sprout. Just like children go through every change, right? When you're first born, if you come out a little too early, you're not fully developed yet. And then uh, as a baby, you can't walk, you can't talk, you can't jump, you can't run. But then you learn how to sit up and then you learn how to crawl and then you learn how to run and then you learn how to jump and then you can do all kinds of amazing things and you keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger, but it takes years, right? Then one spring day, Li Yin went out to visit the mound, as he always did, and to his great excitement, he saw a tiny green sprout poking up through the earth. His tree was growing. He ran to his neighbor, who was a farmer, and told her the exciting news. She gave him advice on how to care for the tree while it was so young and vulnerable, and he listened to her every word, eager to nurture it as best as he could. Soon I'll have many peaches to give you as thanks for your good advice, said Li Yin. But the neighbor just smiled. Li Yin, do you remember how you had to be patient while you waited for the pit to dry? Li Yin, do you, uh, Li Yin nodded. And do you remember how you needed even more patience while you waited for your seed to sprout? Li Yin remembered this too. Well, said the neighbor, it will take even longer before your sapling becomes a tree and sometime after that before it gives fruit. It could be years before the tree is ready to produce any peaches for you to enjoy. And so Yi Lin, Li, Li Yin cared for the tree and tended to its needs as it grew from a sprout to a sapling and from a sapling to a tree. Little by little, it grew taller and broader, just as he did. And then one day, as Li Yin returned from school, he saw the tree's first peaches beginning to emerge where only blossoms had been before. And once again, he felt the joy that filled his heart when the seed had first sprouted. And once again, he knew that he would have to exercise patience for it would be some time still before the peaches would be ready to eat. Things in nature take a long time to grow. Some things grow really fast. Like let's see, weeds, weeds grow really fast and grass, but other things take a really long time like fruit trees and peach trees. And when we moved into our house where we live right now, um, there was a peach tree. It was kind of in a bad location. It was hanging, it was an old peach tree and it only had one arm that would make peaches. And that one arm hung over um, the walkway. And as people would walk past, sometimes they hit their head because it was kind of like a craggly branch. And my father would, would always, whenever he'd come and go to our house, he would always smack his head into the peach tree. Um, the peach tree got kind of sick, but when it had peaches on it, 
the the peaches were so delicious. I never even really liked peaches until we had this peach tree in our house. But the branches would hang really low because the peaches were so heavy. So eventually we had to cut this tree down. And I was kind of upset because I loved peach season, which for us is in August. So every year in August, my daughter and I, and my son wasn't old enough yet, would go out and we pick the peaches and we make peach pies and peach cobblers and peach jam. So when we cut down this tree, it was really kind of sad. But a couple of years ago, I noticed that something was growing where the peach tree had been. And I wasn't sure what kind of tree it was. Um, we had planted some other trees over where the peach tree had been, but I left it and it got bigger and bigger. And over the last two years, this year, it grew, um, two years after I discovered the sapling, it, it bloomed. And now look at what we have growing. I brought one to show you. This is the first year we have peaches growing on it. You see, this is a baby peach. It's very little and it's been growing since the spring at first as a flower and then it um, buds and then where the bud is, the bud falls off and the peach grows. And so this grows and grows and grows and grows, but you start to see the baby peaches growing in like May or maybe even April. And we don't get full peaches until August. So let's see how many months is that? April, May, June, July, August. That's five months, four or five months that you have to wait for the peaches to grow. And if you pick them like this, they don't taste good and a new one won't grow where it got picked. So you can't pick off the, the peaches too early. You have to be very, very patient. So um, I love that story because right now we have a peach tree growing in our backyard and I'll post a picture of it on the my Instagram feed so that you guys can see where it is and where the other plants were planted around it. So I have to keep cutting back the other bushes so that our peach tree can grow as peaches. Pretty cool, huh? So I know you guys are practicing patience. And where do we practice patience? We practice patience. Right now, the whole world has to practice patience when it comes to um, a virus that's been going around. Sorry, my son is making noise downstairs. Um, that might mean we have to stay home and we have to be patient as we wait for school to begin. Or it might mean that we have to be patient as we wait for um, it to be safe to have play dates and to see our family members. We practice patience at home when we really want something, but we're not allowed to have it quite yet. Or maybe it's a good idea to save it and be patient and save it for later. We practice patience when our parents ask us to do something and um, we we don't do it right away. All right, when our parents ask us to do something that maybe we don't want to do so that we can go somewhere. Like my might say to my children, um, I have to be on the phone. While I'm on the phone, I need you to be patient and then afterwards we can go play outside. So they have to practice patience there. Sorry, I wanna make sure my son's not calling to me. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to make butterflies. And there are multiple ways you can make these butterflies. You can, on my linked tree um, link in the profile, there is a file for you if you want to download it and print it. I got it from um, another blog which has the name on the link tree. Um, you can print this out and do it with paint like I'm going to do, or you can print it out and I use an X-Acto knife for this one and cut out the white parts. And then I used glue and um, tissue paper and I made this this uh, sun catcher. And what's kind of cool about making a sun catcher, this is a little bit easier for bigger kids. Um, if you take it outside, I couldn't do it today because it's raining, but if you take it outside and you let the sun shine through it, it will actually actually reflect the color onto the ground or onto um, the blacktop and it could be pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and get a picture of that tomorrow, but I don't have that today. But for the littler kids, it's just easier. If you print out the the butterfly wings, or if you don't have a printer, you could just cut it, cut out a shape of a butterfly. Um, for a Yamiha, I had bought these on Amazon, which are already black cut out butterflies. It's another option if you uh, want to wait and do this project later. Um, and it actually comes with tissue paper. So that's another option. I will link that it says three plus years, but it's actually kind of difficult for the little kids. So what we're going to do today is we're going to just use paint. I'm going to put this down and I'll show you. So I'm using tempera paint because it's what I have. You can use any kind of paint you want. I also have some glitter glue because 
I like to glitter stuff up, but um, I don't like glitter all over my house. <laughs> so I like to use the glitter glue um, because it sticks and it doesn't make a mess. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and you can follow along or you can do it or you can do it however you want. If you don't wanna do it this way, you can also just use markers and color in the butterfly um, and then cut around the outline. That's another option, okay? So I'm gonna tilt this down so you can see. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold it in half because the really cool thing about butterflies is that normally they have a very similar pattern on um, both, both of their wings and it's usually mirrored. Mirrored means that it's in the same place on the wings on both sides. So if you were to hold up a mirror, it would look the same way as if it was open. So what I'm gonna do is I have some paint here and I just happen to have fluorescent colors. I was cleaning out my art room and ran out of uh, temper paints. So this is what I have. So this is what we're gonna use. Now, in our house, we are big into rainbows. I don't know if you feel the same way in your house. You can do rainbow like I'm doing, or you can do whatever colors you want. There's really no going wrong. Red, reddish, orange, yellow, green, blue. And I don't have a purple, but maybe I'll mix a purple because I can do that with the pink and the blue, okay? So I'm gonna mix a purple here too. I don't, I also don't actually have, um, water with me so but here's the general idea what we're going to do is we're going to only decorate one side of the butterfly while it's still wet so you have to work kind of quick depending on the kind of paint you're using we're going to fold it over and we're going to squish it around and then it'll have the same pattern on both sides okay so um i'm going to actually mix a little purple here if you have really little kids like i don't know two under two two and younger you could also do finger painting with this and it comes out pretty cool these make really nice um cards to send to people if you cut around the outside and then flip it over and then you can write a note on the back you can send it to somebody if you want but the whole point is we were um thinking about the patience that that caterpillar had to have to become a butterfly right so i'm just going to work my way up this way oops yeah we're going to go this way and I'm going to use a good amount of paint because I want it to flip over to the other side. So let's see how it works. Okay. Now we're going to fold it over and we're going to squish it around a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to open it up and let's see. Uh oh, I hope I didn't get paint on my rug again. <laughs> That's the problem with me doing this in this room is that sometimes I ruin my rug. Okay, cool. Now what what you can then do is I'm gonna actually wait until this dries and then I'm gonna cut around the outside of it. You don't have to do that. You can make another one if you want. You can add to the outside of the paper if you want. Um, they're really kind of fun to do, but I'm also gonna add a little bit of glitter because glitter is fun, right? So let's see, what should we do? And because we want it to be on both sides, now these glitter, Glitter glue is really not that expensive. It's kind of cool that it, it, um, it's not too expensive. Um, but my kids will go through an entire pack of glitter glue in like 30 seconds. So it's a good thing it's not too expensive. You can either just decorate with the glitter glue like this, or again, you can fold it over again and squish it around. It's up to you what you wanna do. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna decorate with the glitter instead of squishing it around. Cause I already have the squishies on uh, in the background. So maybe I'm gonna give, the other thing you can do is you can use a hole punch and punch out the holes that are along the edges. But I'm just gonna give my, my butterfly some details here. Okay, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so, so those are a couple different things that you can do 
I hope you enjoy making your butterflies. Um, it's kind of meditative doing this. And as always, if you'd like to show me what you make, I would love to see it and share it with the other kids that are on here. Um, again, I'm sorry I'm not here at our normal time, 2.30 on Sunday. Again, I have to help my husband with a service project that he's doing. So if you want to come back, um, this will be posted on Instagram Live in my Instagram feed. Um, Instagram TV, I think is what it's called. I'm also going to upload it to my uh, YouTube page. So it's there for anyone who wants to watch it whenever it's convenient for you and your kids. If you were here with me today, thanks for stopping by. I know it was a surprise. I didn't tell anyone I was getting on um, early, but I love you all. I can't wait to see you next week and um, show me what you make.